Hey everybody, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I am Bill. We're in the Community Mod G36 Bonanza, which is still and so far the best uh, general aviation plane in Microsoft, and I think it's the best GA plane in any of the sims that I've tried. I haven't tried them all, but this is so far my favorite, most realistic, uh, most fun to to fly in. So we're gonna do what I have called, it hasn't caught on yet. The, the minute I hear somebody else use this besides me, um, uh, I, will be, I will be proud because I am determined to coin this phrase. This phrase. Um, I'm calling this the golden loop, and it is John Wayne, Catalina, Big Bear, in any order. I think Big Bear first, and then Catalina is probably the best way to do it, um, and then come back to, to John Wayne, but uh, we're going to do Catalina first, so we're going to depart John Wayne, fly up the coast, cut over, uh, we'll do a full stop taxi back. At, um, uh, at Catalina, and then we'll do the same thing back at. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and if you do, if you do Big Bear first, um, it's we're simulating one of Brad's dates, and that is the perfect date. If you go, if you have breakfast in Big Bear, and then lunch Buffalo Tacos um, yeah, at Catalina, you're you're in. You're absolutely in. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is cool that it shakes. It doesn't really shake that much, um, but it is. It does kind of add a little bit of ambience. It's pretty cool. But yeah, look at how much the elevator affects the, uh, the stance there. It's this is how the plane sits normally with the elevator down like that. Um, but it, the spring-loaded control doesn't do that. So okay, let's uh, let's get a move on here. Johnny Ground Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, continue. Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, runway 20 right, taxi via Bravo Kilo. Bravo Kilo 20 right, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. Oh, dude, yeah. When, um, when this thing starts up, uh, and when I'm in the back connected to a harness, oh my god, it sounds so good. You can just like the the exhaust is just pointed right at right at the you know the rear of the cabin with the with the doors open, uh, just burbles, burbles so much it's great. Uh, Bonanza or sorry the the Mooney, um, you know I don't have any time in a Mooney. Uh, I would I would love to fly a Mooney at some point or fly in a Mooney at some point because I do think that they are very cool. Um, but a lot of my motivation for wanting to fly a particular plane or not is based on uh, real world proximity or exposure to that plane. Uh, if I got a ride in a Mooney tomorrow, I would probably get the Mooney in the simulator. <laughs> um, but, you know, being lucky enough to have the amount of time that I've had. In, in a bonanza makes flying this even better than it would have been Thank otherwise. You, Delta two, one, three, uh, you know, there's no frame of reference the for the Mooney that I have. So, you know, it could fly great, but I wouldn't know. And that, I don't know, is kind of not, def doesn't defeat the purpose of it for me, but it doesn't, it's not as enjoyable for me. Um, you know, without without that real world experience, even if it's a little a little bit. Flying monkey, hello, um, flying monkey. Since you are here and since you uh, just used that emote, Tower, I would like you to type exclamation point send it. Chester two one one eight Foxtrot Oxnard Tower left downwind departure eastbound approved runway two five clear for takeoff. Left downwind departure runway two five clear for takeoff two one one eight Foxtrot. Delta 213, Burbank clearance. Good evening. Clear to Las Vegas Airport. Slap two departure mites in transition. Then as well. <laughs> Maintain. Damn 4, it. How did that not work? Did I spell it wrong? Departure frequency I may have spelled one, it wrong. Three, four point two, squawk tree, six, um, six, tree. Or did you. Crap. Delta 213, clear Las Vegas via slap two departure mites in 
Then it's filed 4,000, expect flight level 250, 10 minutes. Yeah, I totally departure. either like didn't save it or what, I don't know what happened. Okay, hang on. back is correct. I could, I'll do this, I'll do this now. Um, send it. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's annoying. I freaking tested it too. And it worked great. And I was like, sweet, that's done now. And um, I guess I ruined it. Okay. All right, now somebody try. <laughs> oh yeah, the the Bonanza flight model with the community you guys mod. Silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the Bonanza flight model with the community mod uh, control is is absolutely beautiful in my in my opinion alone is ground with skyhawk you guys Eight silly zero, i'm still gonna send it at the east hangar ready to taxi <laughs> oh that makes me so down. happy i love it uh what are we doing okay yeah we're holding short that's what we're doing demos ground runway two niner taxi via alpha taxi via alpha runway two nine zero nine delta Jami Tower, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, holding short 20 right at Kilo. Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, Jami Tower, runway 20 right at Kilo, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 20 right at Kilo, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. All right, so we're going to go lights, camera, action, looks good. Cleared left. Cleared right. Entered runway 20 right. 5,300 sure feet nice. remaining. We have a nice little uh, rotation view here. That should be good. That should give us a nice gear swing shot. Uh, Brad, in the in the regular. G36, um, does the RPM go red when you're full? Like that? That's a okay, props coming back. Gear swinging. Lights coming off. Early turnout is approved. Um, did I say in the regular? In the real. I meant in the real. Uh, in the real G36. Uh, with the G1000, like when I go full power, full RPM, full power That's on takeoff. Like rate of contact, say altitude. Climbing through 500, Bonanza 4 Lima Echo. Bonanza 4 Lima Echo, contact your friend, 128.1. Have a good day. Hi, right, contacting uh, SoCal, 281, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. We'll talk to you later. Pseudo. Pseudo. <laughs> How's it going? That's a common thing for complex plane with glass panels, though. 10 to 50 RPM over is normal, usually an indication error. Okay. Roger that. SoCal Approach, good evening. Bonanza 204 Lima Echo 1100, climbing restricted. Hi, Bill. Hi, Goldie. 204 Lima Echo, SoCal Approach, channel altimeter 3022. 3022 Bonanza 4 Lima Echo. 3023. 3023 Bonanza 4 Lima Echo. 3 Tango Hotel, flying 080. Okay, there we go. Right 080, 93 Tango Hotel. Once here, Tango connects to Caliper 119.6. just amazes me how cool that looks to follow approach that's not one one zero tango to a thousand five hundred everyone one let's see here tango so cal approach for our mona ultimate three zero two three two three one zero tango yeah me too crest
Mecca, cancel altitude restrictions, resume on navigation. ONAV and altitudes of Bonanza 204 Lee Mecca, we'll be going up to 4,500 direct to Point Furman. <laughs> since the beginning, since the first time I signed up for this thing, Gold Z has been there. Just waiting. It's so awesome. Yeah, he gets the stream. Okay, I gotta, I gotta hop on the scope. No, I think he probably does the exact opposite, actually. <laughs> like, oh god, what nonsense am I gonna be subject to now? And that's fair. That's fair, Goldie. Cool. Well, we are on our way up to 4,500. On our way to the reverse Brad date. Um, there's Huntington Beach Pier down there. Julia got a really great picture of the pier on on Sunday. We did a little a little flight. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting uh, video potentially. It may not see the light of day, but. My, my goal for the flight on Sunday is to just go up. Um, we were anticipating or um, wanting to do a little bit of pattern work, but the pattern was closed. So we just decided to do a little cruise down the coast to do some air work. Um, I wanted Julia to, to fly the plane a little bit, which, which she did. Um, she freaked out on the takeoff. And I'm like, I was, I told her like, I'm controlling the plane but I want you to like feel, feel the plane. Um, and as we were on the roll down the runway, she like freaked out and couldn't, couldn't do it. Didn't want to do it. Um, so then I gave her back the controls when we were uh, released on our, you know, own nav and altitudes from our Newport departure down the coast. And I had her like take it down to a thousand feet and just, you know, fly along the coast. Um, and I was I was fully hands off at that point, um, and then then things uh, fell apart a little bit. So she's that's why like, I I'm I'm wondering like she was very uncomfortable in in the plane and um, doing doing some of the maneuvers and stuff. So I'm I'm I haven't really looked at the footage yet, um, but. It might be kind of interesting to see, you know, what do with like a little bit of a post mortem. Um, oh yeah, well it was, it was. Um, she enjoyed the coastline stuff, but she doesn't. She really didn't like the turns, and um, it was like I, I when I asked her, I was like, you know, what, what was it? Um, you know what? What is it about the you know the, the steep turns? And we didn't do. I mean, like, I mean, you know me, Brad. I did not, you know, do anything over. Um, you know, I didn't overdo anything. But she just she just said she was like, I just don't like. It just feels weird. I just it just feels feels weird. So um, she did. She did great, and she had fun flying along the coast, but just you know, kind of in a straight line, like not really. Uh, yeah, I do. I do not have that instructor touch. Three, eight, one, and eight, I Tango would, Connect, SoCal approach one one nine point six. One one nine point um, six. Yeah, eight, I one, do not have anywhere near that level of delicacy. You know, because I love it. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, do do a steep turn. And like with my buddy Chad, when we went out, like he loved it. You know, he like this is the coolest thing ever. Like he couldn't he couldn't get enough of it. Um. So I was just thinking, you know, cool, she's just going to, you know, she'll, so approach she'll um, just grab the controls and I'll shadow and just, I mean, I'm flying the plane still, but um, she was very uncomfortable. So we'll see what, 
what it um, uh, what it looks like. You know, if she looks like way too uncomfortable, then um, you know I'll leave it alone. But if there's anything that's interesting there, we'll, we'll see. Um, and she has done a proper discovery flight, yeah. But it was very mild stuff. And I mean, she's been in the plane with Brad doing 200 mile an hour low pass, you know, uh, John Wayne. So she's, she's been in the plane doing some fun stuff, but she doesn't like it when she's controlling the plane, which is, which is weird. Um, uh, intoxicated pilot, we will see. We will see. Uh, Julia November would like to head uh, back to John Wayne and do the two zero right uh, approach. I ILS. For 724, Julia November, Roger, no, have your request. 193 <laughs> Tango Hotel, turn right heading 130. Not 100 miles away. Right, 130, 93 Tango Hotel. Julia, November cleared to the John Wayne Airport via direct Seal Beach VOR direct to maintain 3000. Yeah, I can assure you it was not 100 miles. Long. Cleared uh, John Wayne direct uh, via Seal Beach, uh, maintain 3000, 724 Julia, November. For Julia, November, reback is correct. Flighting 020, unable to proceed direct to Seal Beach. 020, direct Seal Beach. SoCal approach, Bonanza 204, Lee Mac, we're making our turn towards Catalina. Absolutely, yeah, runway 26. Clear direct at the 4000, uh, cleared for the uh, IO or RNAV Zulu, runway 2693 Tango Hotel. Yeah, it's direct GRX Juliet Uniform Romeo Echo X ray. Here we go, okay. Direct to GRX 93 Tango Hotel. Well, once you go Tango Connect, so caliber is 135.4. I don't need a pilot's license. Trust me, it is not a substitution. <laughs> it is it is a lot of fun though. Um, it is a lot of fun, but yeah. So call approach, touch on one one two tango, twelve thousand five hundred. One two tango, so California. Yeah, doing aerial, doing this. Um, two two one two tango. Eighty one alpha tango, but doing doing this with. Uh, uh, with one of your best friends is probably the coolest thing uh, uh, for the ILS runway two you can four. do in a plane, in a in well, anything, Roger, just in general. <laughs> a lot of knots and not a lot of feet. <laughs> there is not a video of that one, I don't think. Alpha Tango, turn left heading 080. Oh, yeah, that was the. Left heading 080. Uh, the tango. mountain trip. We obviously have the Palomar ones. <laughs> yeah, there was some kinetic energy discussion. All right, we are still dry right now. Uh, by by a little bit. So that's good to know. Oh, I should probably close those cow flaps. That might help. So we are almost wet here. Almost wet and start. Oh, I'm actually going to start the timer as soon as we're wet and then start it or stop it when we're not. Okay, there's there is we are um, we are going in the water right there. I'm halfway there hours wise and Catalina is definitely on the list. <laughs> yeah, it is it is pretty amazing one. SoCal approach, Bonanza two zero four Lima Echo, we'd like to cancel flight following. The 
want to talk to me anymore, Bill? <laughs> we'll bug you in a little bit. I'm hurt. Radar service terminated. Squawk VFR changed to advisory frequency. Squawk and VFR changed to advisory frequencies. Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. All right, do we have eyes on the airport? We do. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not uh, not entertaining enough for you, eh? It's not it at all, Goldie. Okay. Um, there we're almost we're almost back on land, um, and it's almost exactly that minute, um, that ninety seconds. So there's there's uh, there's land again. So it is in a bonanza at 4,500 from Point Furman. You're looking at a, a 90 second wet footprint. Uh, so that means that for 90 seconds in this flight, um, if we had an engine out, we would be in the water. Um, and that's like, you know, we're close to the shore. Uh, at that point, we're gliding close to the shore. Probably, uh, you know, with an oil rig or a, a ship that looks like it's got, uh, you know, the engines on or something, uh, might be a better option than trying to stretch it to the coast uh, where you've got the surf to deal with. But, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, a minute and a half that you don't want to have anything go wrong. But it is... I guess you could say just a minute and a half. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, eight miles to the northeast. We'll be entering uh, overhead break for runway 22 Catalina. In the, oh, in the plane, you never timed it? Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's exactly, it's, I mean, it was exactly 90 seconds. I was a little bit on the high side. Um, it may be a little bit more than that. Um, you know, actually at 45, I think it was at 46, 47 or something. Um, but yeah, pretty damn close guess for sure. And also, I'd have to make sure that my um, my glide ratio is correct on four flight, but I believe it is set up correctly. Um, I don't know, because it's fun. I don't know. Why do we like doing the break, Brad? <laughs> the ops guy likes it. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, two mile initial runway 22, uh, we'll be in a right hand break, Catalina. Yeah, there are, there are a ton of boats. Catalina traffic, Bonanza Short, final, 204, Lima two, two. Echo, right hand brake, runway 22, full stop, Catalina. 3, 2, 1. Alright, so this is, this is, this will be a bit of a sim-ism here, um, where we've got really crappy visibility. <laughs> <laughs> for doing this, uh, you just can't obviously can't see can't see much. Um, I'm using a little combination of uh, knowing the terrain a little bit and the G1000 and four flight. So, Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, midfield right downwind, runway 22, full stop, Catalina. Uh, what's up, Maria? We are going to Catalina. Ooh, I'm like super low. 
And that's uh, that's also the the hazard of not looking outside is, you know, when you're doing the break, when you're looking at where the airport is, you're just feeling your descent all the way down. Uh, this, um, I was not looking at the altitude, and I ended up getting a little bit low. Okay, so there we go. We are configured. We got three green. Flaps are down. Let's see if I could just keep it on the center line. That would be super rad. Little, little overcorrection on the on the little ho toss there, but um, we we could have been off by that first exit. Yeah, isn't that nice? I wasn't I wasn't looking, <laughs> but I I have seen it before. <laughs> I'll take your word for it on on this occasion. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks pretty pretty phenomenal. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, clear 22, taxi back, departing runway 22, Catalina. All right, so we'll get the strobes, oh, strobes off. Oh, we will oh, lean for some ground operation. Uh, Bundy, thank you very much for following. Welcome. This is this is really pretty. We'll, we'll do a little drive-by of the the con the um, facilities here, but yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. Uh, flight controls are a Thrustmaster Hotus X, and uh, rudder pedals fished out of uh, garbage. <laughs> so very very basic setup. Um, I I am sticking with the mentality of not needing. Uh, fancy peripherals to uh, have fun and um, you know be successful with with the sim. But yeah, look at look at that. That's pretty mega. <laughs> yeah, the, well, yeah, that's that's the other extreme. The Xbox controller is the other extreme. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna spend three hundred and fifty dollars on a yoke, and I'm also not gonna use an Xbox controller. There, there's a happy medium in there, um, somewhere. <laughs> That's really funny. And Approaching runway zero four that, two two. Uh, that little dip is not. In Airport. Uh, and then equal to um, what I said earlier about flying to Catalina being one of the coolest things you can do uh, ever with a friend, uh, the departure out of Catalina is by itself one of the coolest things ever. Approaching runway 22. Yeah, this, this looks freaking awesome. Look at that. God, that's so amazing. What a place. What a place. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, departing room A22, straight out, Catalina. All right, well, one of the really cool things about this scenery is it shows, like, there, there is a um, 
plateau, a hump, whatever you want to call it at Catalina, where it looks like the runway is, there is a number, I forget what the number is, um, 600 feet shorter or something like that. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, a lot of people will flat spot their tires thinking they're running out of runway when in fact it, it goes over this hump and you've got another 600 something feet worth of, of uh, braking distance or you know whatever you need takeoff distance but it is very um, deceiving looking uh, particularly when you're taking off because you're you're down further when you're when you're coming into land you can kind of see that you do have um, you know you can see the whole runway until a point it does the end of the runway does fade um, the lower you get but okay let's go lights camera is on and then we'll get full mixture but from from here you'll be able to see uh, a lot more entered runway two two three thousand feet thank you very much which um which this scenery does show you look at that so right here it looks like um you know it's a short runway uh, cbg have a great one thank you for for joining as always okay there's full power uh, it's a little bit dramatic here. Um, this kind of looks like it curves more than um, like angles off, but that that's actually pretty good right there. That's actually really good. Yep, right in the same spot too. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Get off the ground, there you go. And now we drop off the end. Oh my god, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> and now we are below uh, runway altitude. Holy frick, that's amazing. that feeling too just like oh my god here we go okay this is such crazy turning aviate have a great night All right, we're going a little bit fast, I guess. <laughs> Could probably pull that back a little bit. Mm. Being very distracted by this terrain here. So this back, the back side of Catalina here is really um, rocky cliff faces, which Flight Sim doesn't really display very well. It doesn't do like that textured rockiness. Um, so I'm curious to see how this will look. I mean, right now it's just looking like draped over um, ortho. But yeah, this is this really this isn't any better than X planes, honestly. Like, um, the four, four flight is connected with flight events. Uh, X plane will do it uh, without any third party plugins. Um, Microsoft needs the uh, flight events plugin to work, and it works. It works great. The water looks way better, yeah. But this is this just does look like like an ortho. I mean, it's really nice. It's I mean, it's cool, but. Um, it's not, this isn't wowing me like a lot of other um, sceneries. I don't want to call them biomes, but this is one, I guess, that you could kind of, you know, tropical island uh, on the shore. It's a little, it's a little bit dead. I mean, that would be, so I'm sure somebody will do it, have actual dynamic waves in water. Um, 
that would make it look pretty cool, but graphically, like, I don't know how the hell you pull that off. But it looks, it looks okay. Yeah, so here's that, like, the, the real cliff face portion, um, and that does, that's a little underwhelming there. All right, Brad. Um, thank you for... <laughs> well, we know that there are some screws loose in this cabin. Hello. <laughs> Hi. There are indeed, Brad. Um, we need to fly. Um, it's been it's been too long. So let's let's figure out um, in what to where and when. I have really two of those things we, we probably know. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we we know what two of those things are. Um, yeah, we do we do need to get some. Yeah, we, we might have to go take a little trip to Pomona. This is this is one of the cooler things that I still to this day have done in an airplane uh, with Brad flying flying around Catalina like this. It's freaking awesome. Take this turn. Oh, take this turn um, a little bit wide, just in case there's any helicopter coming around here. Take it um, you can. Uh, you just pop right up there. We we had that discussion because um, when I when I did this with Brad, I was still a student, and we, you know, one of Brad's favorite topics is uh, energy management and conservation. And he was like, "Yeah, if we had an engine out right now, where where would we go? Where would you where would you go?" And I was like, "In the like off the shore." And he's like, okay, yeah, that's that's one spot. He goes, I would, uh, I just pop up there. And yeah, engine comes out. We've got tons of energy to to just pop right up there. Um, now the terrain is not really that great, but um, there are some plateaus, and like I said, we've got a ton of energy. Oh, look at that. I didn't know that they added the um, casino, I think. I always forget what that is. There is a casino over there, and I don't know if that's it. That might be the Yacht Club. Um, but that that's super cool. And then this, this is a unique thing. Um, Flying underneath the approach end of the run of the run, like we actually watched. Um, we watched planes landing above us, which is one of the few places in the, I, probably in the world, one of the few places in the world that you can you can do that, which is pretty cool. That is the old casino. Okay, um, is it anything now, or is it um, like can you go in there? I think the yacht club was close by. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, just passing Avalon. We're going to be crossing underneath the approach end of 22, and we'll start our climb at Two Harbors, Catalina. I've been snorkeling out in Two Harbors, never, well, I've never scuba dived, um, but it is unbelievable the the change like how different the water is versus the coast it's like so warm and clear and completely different feel
crossing underneath the approach end here in just a second. Probably just catch a little bit of the of the runway. Catalina traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, 300 feet along the coast, crossing underneath the approach end, Catalina. Yeah, you can you can see right up there. That's that's where the where the runway is. So yeah, if somebody was what's up, River? If somebody was landing um, right now, we would see them above us. Right up the casino there is a designated city park. Boats can't go over, and that's some um, cool shit to see over there. Oh, sweet. Steps walk to walk right in and out. That's awesome. Yeah, snorkeling is really fun. I, I had a good time doing that. It was absolutely uh, miserable um, camping trip, but the snorkeling was fun. This is, uh, this is two harbors right here. This is where we, where we snorkel. So I, this little island that the nose is off of right there, that's white covered in bird poop. And it looked like it was not very far away. So my friend and I swam out there, like snorkeled out to that from the harbor, from over there. And we, it was like two miles. <laughs> it was such a bad idea. So we ended up uh, catching a ride on a, a scuba, commercial scuba diving boat like speedboat and they dropped us off shore and shore it was one of the dumber things I've done. That's what college is for though, right? Doing dumb stuff. Alright, let's make the turn back to Mainland. I have to do some Bravo avoidance here, I think. Um, we've got a really pesky shelf. So we want to make sure we're we're clear of the Bravo, um, but also we need to be, you know, at at um, good altitudes here. Uh, SoCal approach Bonanza two zero four Lima Echo four thousand climbing five thousand five hundred seven miles to the north of Catalina View. Four Lima Echo Socat Approach, Quack 7417 seven, Identical. 7417 four, one, seven, seven, four, seven, Bonanza 4 Lima Echo. 204 Lima Echo, radar contact 7 miles northwest of Santa Catalina VOR. Say again, the destination airport. Oh, shit, shit. Come on, come on. Don't freeze, don't freeze. Uh oh. Uh, destination is Big Bear, uh, Lima 35, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. Lima 4, Lima Echo, thanks. And uh, what altitude is going to be the highest along your route of flight? We'll be at 9,500 once we're clear of the Bravo, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. 4, Lima Echo, thank you. Our initial will be 5,500 uh, underneath that shelf. Understood.
Cool. All right, so um, 120 knot so call approach, climb. So call tango, at That's good. Um, Remember, RPM one one looks tango, good. Everything, the plane is, is looking good. good. VFR, good night. One tango. Shut it off. Cool. All right. So there is our cruise altitude. So I'm going to set the autopilot here just for for ease of just give myself a break <laughs> for, the, for a minute. As nice as this thing flies, it uh, does take a little bit of effort to hold it there. How are, how are we looking? We're looking good. Oh, we're looking good. I am. This is a good use of tax dollars. Okay. Uh, poor Jerry. <laughs> What's up, Brian? Poor Jerry. No more Jerry. kind of a cool shot. I love the, the texture water. They nail, as much as X-Plane blew it with water, this looks so good. Just that like ripple effect um, looks unbelievable. The lighting right now isn't doing it any favors. It doesn't look that great, but um, God, yeah, it's this thing um, Blows me away almost every time. 204 Lima Echo, connect to Catapar 228.1. 28.1, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. See ya. Same guy. Uh, okay, there we go. SoCal Approach, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, 5500. 204 Lima Echo, SoCat approach. The Chan Wayne altimeter 3023. 3023, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. Uh, yeah, this thing just is cruising along really nicely. Sit back and, and just watch the miles tick away. Um, yeah, so uh, a little bit going back to as we kind of approach the, the shore here, um, which by the way, we are now, um, we're now dry. So if we had an engine out, we're going right to Point Furman. Um, I didn't time that one, but it seemed like it was little bit a um, little bit quicker even though we started closer to the shore as we were climbing we're, we're up a thousand feet more so that gives us just an even longer glide range uh, as we were climbing up so the the wet footprint um, will probably would have been pretty close to to the same um, Korit, Koritsky uh, welcome, thank you for following. I just got an X52 Pro throttle and joystick. Does anyone have a good setup? Joshua Approach 126.1, Roger. A uh, setup meaning like button configuration kind of thing? Um, that, well, let me, I will, that is a great segue. Um, if you are new, if you need some help, if you have questions, the Discord is a really great place to to go. It's an unbelievable community. We've got over 1,300 members, which blows me away. Um, but CFIs, CFIs, airline pilots, jet captains, um, student pilots, all the way from Discovery flight to pre-check ride. You know, just any any type of aviation um, member is represented there. Um, we even have some air traffic controls. Is that correct? 
uh, both virtual and real. So whatever your question is, whether it's sim related, like setting up uh, a joystick, we've got tech support channels, um, or asking questions about how to get started, what to say, um, performance, figures, Five, procedures, Caution. checklists, all that. Uh, uh, really, really great resource. So um, if you are interested in, in aviation at all, um, and, it's a great uh, place you're to practice approaches. What's your first request? Check out uh, first request Complete Freedom. The VR Alpha into Oceanside. Uh, thank you for joining. We also have Havoc Blast. Daytona, uh, Wiz Nation, uh, OBFG has joined as well. Um, make sure you uh, react to the rules page. I will manually do it for you guys, but that's if, if anyone's having trouble with Discord, that's, that's, you just have to react to the rules. And, um, so thank you guys. Cool. That's all. We got some. We got some new members. How cool is that? Thank you guys, and welcome. Uh, I haven't used four flights since back in 2013. Glide has taken into account glide speed and any excess speed above that to compute the glide distance. Um, no, it uses your best glide. So it is interpolating the distance at that point when you're at best glide, or if you're at best glide at that point. Um, what's up, Adon? So if you're going, um, if we're doing 160, and what's best glide, I think, is 90 in this plane, something um, like that, uh, it's assuming that glide ring is assuming that you're going 90 at that point. Uh, um, so where that, it kind of, um, it's not ideal, but here's kind of what happens when, when you're going, when you're doing 160, um, yeah, and it does the wins, yeah, um, or, I mean, at least from what it has, what information it has, um, but when you're, so you're going 160, if the engine cut out, your glide ring is going to show you, you know, what area, you know, what is your kind of safe ring, right? As you're still traveling forward, you then pitch the nose up, gain altitude as you're still moving forward. So ideally, you're going to be moving towards whatever area you're going to land at as you're climbing. So that ring is actually going to grow a little bit as you start to slow down, and then you start to descend once you've hit your, your best glide speed. So there is a little bit of um, extra glide potential that you might have. Um, you just obviously, like um, uh, like Ryan says, you have to keep into account winds. Uh, you know, might not be super accurate if you, if you don't have ADS-B in updating, you know, and, and you know who knows how accurate winds aloft are anyway um, for those purposes. But it does it does keep into account that to some extent. Um, I wouldn't push the boundaries of the ring though. Yeah, for well, yeah, definitely don't push the boundaries of the ring. I'm just saying like that that will grow. Like if like right here, if I had an engine out, um, I am not aiming for Long Beach. <laughs> like it's within the glide ring. But I'm not, I'm not aiming for for Long Beach. Um, I'm not aiming for John Wayne either. Uh, but yeah, it it. Um, by the time you figure out what you're gonna do, it will probably be accurate, but it will change within that period of time. So it's a, it's assuming that right now you're at glide, best glide, and that's where you'll go. Um, what is the map insert you have up? That that is uh, for flight. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's on it's on an iPad, right here. So I just have it um, cast uh, to the stream. So this is just picking up what uh, what I'm looking at. But um, you know this is this is what you have uh, when you're flying. You know I'd have this in the plane. Um, I have I actually mount mine on the yoke. Uh, some people put it on the window. Some people have a have it on their their knee. 
Um, but yeah, you'll have you'll have access to that information uh, in the real plane, which is invaluable. I mean, I'm I'm in, absolutely in love with with Four Flight. It's it's so nice, and I I had my first kind of experience of um, caution inside TF um, non. Planned. Joshua, approach Mooney nine zero um, kilo. Something has come up. But four flights. I have to drop off the network. Less flying time on on Sunday. Uh, I I did not the the iPad didn't charge and I was like ah oh, we're not going that far like it's fine so we didn't um you know it was it's not a big deal but I uh, actually I'm gonna set this up here. Um, I ended up just being like, you know what, I'm going to just put this away. So I just, you know, I just put it away. And, um, didn't, didn't bother um, having it out. And when you're, when you're local, I mean, I know, I know the surrounding area. I didn't, I, I don't need four flight. Um, there's probably, what could I do without four flight? I could do John Wayne Santa Monica without four flight, without looking at anything. Um, I could also do French Valley. Uh, I mean, there's like a number number of flights that I could do just just off of memory um, with all the frequencies and and um, uh, SoCal approach Bonanza two zero four Limaca. We're gonna start a climb to nine thousand five hundred. Roger. Uh, but yeah, like, just the point of me saying that is that, um, you know, you don't need to have, whoa, hello, friend. Um, it's, it can be a crutch, but, um, it was weird. It was a weird sensation going into the flight, having, having it, and then looking at the battery go down and be like, I'm not going to have this for very long. <laughs> like, uh, this is, this is not... This is not great, um, but it but it's fine. Like I said, like I, I'm fine with not having it in those situations where it's just you know I've got the charts on board and I know the flight, so it's not that necessary. But when you don't have it, um, you do feel a little bit naked for a second. Um, Smoka Steve, thank you very much for for following. I wish I could have caught you in setting up flight plans and stuff on four flight so I can learn the way uh, I've been looking up YouTube videos because I subscribe so I can learn the old school way a little easier later down the road cool man yeah well it's it's um, I mean I'm happy to show you or you know or answer any questions that you you have um, but uh, yeah it's I'm you know it's pretty straightforward but yeah happy to help uh, ran into one of your videos actually about Pilot Edge, but ended up going with Batson. Well, I, uh, oddly enough, I have a uh, video about Batson as well. Um, it's a little, it's just a little different um, uh, focus on the two there. But yeah, one will definitely, uh, or the, they'll both get you prepared um, in some way. Pilot Edge just gets you prepared a little bit more thoroughly and in my opinion. So, Kale, departure November 1 by Mike Bigger, oh, level 3000. Right <laughs> so yeah, I have, uh, Julia has it on her phone, so I, I told her, I was like, yeah, get your phone out in case we need it. Um, I don't have a Apple phone, so I don't have... Um, I don't have that. And I also have backup batteries and a charger, but it's, um, again, I don't have, I, I am comfortable flying out of John Wayne without the iPad, so I, it's not anything that I um, feel like I need, I need to have a backup for on that flight. Lima Echo, kind of Socal, approach 135.4. 35.4, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. Um, so are you, Steve, are you a real world student? Are you, did I miss that somewhere, somewhere? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I uh, made that up in my head. 
I carried an old paper sectional for most of my training. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I did not. Uh, for the first little bit, I had I had the sectional in there, but yeah, I did, did not. Uh, not for very long. Well, I, I should say relative to where I was at. It was only 12 hours before I switched to four flight, which happened to be at my solo cross country. SoCal approach, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, 7,700 climbing, 9,500. Number 204 Lima Echo, SoCal approach, Ontario, altimeter 3024. 3024 Lima Echo. Fortunately not, I have the Jeppesen kit. Uh, 141 coming in the mail now. But I got a nice sim set up. Okay, cool. Make a little bit of a correction here, direct to Big Bear. And how's this thing lean? I haven't actually spent much time looking at. Um, the fuel flow, I mean, 15 gallons is pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty good. That view, that view out, out of a Bonanza's nose is pretty awesome. Uh, Steve, so since you um, you are new here, let me let me drop the Discord link again. Uh, this is such a great place for information. Um, you know, we got a lot of CFIs. Um, God, it's so good. It's so good. You know, welcome to everybody that joined the Discord today. Um, I know a lot of a lot of streamers and a lot of outlets um, do this same spiel. You know follow along, join, more content, get notifications, blah, blah, blah. All of that is true. If you, join the, if you join the Discord, it is very self-serving to me. I do benefit from having um, you join the Discord from notifications and, you know, just connection, you know, whatever. But it's really become um, less and less about... And the stream and the content that I put out you can call Grant and more about the community as a whole, which I could not be more happy about. So for what that's worth, um, what you know, is it, I, you suggest, uh, that's why I really feel, through, uh, the radar I feel okay about pushing it as hard as I do because it, it really you, is beneficial for a lot of people. And you can call up for Squawk Info, and uh, thank you so much for the gifted sub to Smoke a Steve. Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah, welcome. Welcome aboard. Roger, I'll call around him. So let's look at some weather for Big Bear. We do have ADSB in in this plane, which helps out with uh, many things, weather being one of them. Uh, Big Bear is not a difficult runway, but it is a very difficult airport. Complete freedom, thank you for the bits. That's awesome, man. Uh, I've heard a lot about the Discord. Still a little confused how it works. I assume just communication with the community full of pilots. Um, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I highly recommend just so giving, approach, giving it a shot. Hog, um, it's one more one thing mile, you have to sign up for, but I, I almost guarantee you, you will get hooked. Because uh, it's mic. fantastic. Um, uh, you no, know, I got my wife to download like Discord, to and she's got like a little, she's a personal trainer, so she has like a little fitness mic. area in the server, but she loves it too, it's just like an amazing connection, and it feels a lot more like a connection with people rather than social, you know, following somebody on social media, um, because it's just, it's a, it's kind of ongoing conversations, and 
Um, you know, I should do. I should figure out a way to do a video on the Discord. That would be kind of fun. Uh, okay, so what I was saying about the weather is that Big Bear and Catalina are both very hazardous and dangerous airports. Um, they are not really any difficult, any more difficult than any other uh, airport in terms of their runway. And it's kind of, uh, a, what is that, a difference without a distinction or something? Is that how that saying goes? Julie, do you know what that saying is? You're a difference without a distinction. Santa Barbara Departure, System November 8th, Can you okay. turn, Well, that's a saying, I'm pretty sure. But um, Fallbrook is a more difficult and dangerous runway than Big Bear, for example. Uh, it's short, it's sloped, it has a cliff face at the end of it, so it's a dangerous runway. Uh, Big Bear is a long, wide, nice runway, but it is at an altitude, it is in the mountains, there's hazards to get there and the biggest hazard is the weather so on we'll just make this full screen how about that i don't know if you can see this and i mean we're just kind of cruising here there's not much to see so i'll go i'll go big just so it's like in your face winds are calm visibility is 10 clouds clear below 12,000. So, so that's that's great um temperature is one so it's very cold and it is high, we have a high pressure. November three, you know, correction, number eight, two, partially nine, why it's so nine, 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 Um, the density altitude is 6,200 feet. So the density altitude is 500 feet below uh, runway elevation, which is great. If it's hot, that's when the density altitude goes sky high and you get into real problems. Um, so density altitude and clouds are the two biggest issues with with Catalina, or sorry, with with Big Bear. Um, winds can be as well, but it's pretty shadowed um, from the northerly um, Santa Ana's coming over. But it can also get, you know, it can, you know, whip off, whip off the mount, whip off the mountains uh, as well. But today, right now, that's about as perfect as you can get. Uh, we got cold temperatures, so as long as we don't shut the engine down, we'll be fine. <laughs> um, and we'll get right in there. But I just wanted to point that out, you know, the density altitude in particular, as as the, the main thing to look out for. Not an issue when it's below freezing or at freezing. Um, yeah. Yeah, Cultivator has a great um, description there. Yeah, it's just everyone. People who know nothing about aviation. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it's, it's really great. It's really great. Um, you can just, I mean, I, I just say well, just try it, you know. And I'll, I'll uh, let you in here, Smoke of Steve. Either you have to, and I'm probably going to change that, but you have to react to the November 6031, my radar services are terminated, and you can report airborne on this frequency. Uh, frequency change. Sorry, frequency. there's an important conversation. Three one mic, thank um, you. Okay, but yeah, you can. Um, you just have to react to the rules, and it'll let you in. But I, I think you'll really enjoy it. It does get quiet during streams, generally, for obvious reasons, but um, it's usually very, very active. Marie zero nine 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 one, contact Santa Maria Tower one one eight point three. The tower, nine, 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 one, All right. Yeah, it's it's just a great it's a great place to to learn and ask questions from scratch. And I started I started my. Um, Discord server pretty early on, um, I want to say. There's probably a way to look that up. Um, like how old the server is. Privacy settings. Yeah, how do I figure out when this thing was made? Hey, bird. I don't know. But it was pretty early on. Oh, hi. 
Oh, hi, Dreadnought. <laughs> What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Number one five, Mike Victor, fly heading three zero zero, Victor Van Nuys Airport, kind of except got approach one three four point two. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, let's see. Um, uh, sorry, so that Bill? was uh, three zero zero and one thirty four point two. And oldest. Number five, Mike Victor, that's correct. All right, we'll go one five, Mike Victor. <laughs> um, okay, so the oldest one that I see here is June 2018. June 2018. Okay, I'll approach November 1, 5, Mike Victor, level 4,000. Okay, so June 2018 is apparently when... November 1, 5, Mike Victor, so we got a pressure, I don't know if it's 3024, and we're looking for the ILS... Dreadnought, thank you for the five gifted subs. Um, my mother Maria got in there. Um, Hank, screw it, Rivercom, single coil. Dreadnought, thank you so much, man. That is really, really nice of you. I appreciate that a ton. Um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy it, you guys. I think we've got some, we've got some fun sound effects in there. Once the once the notifications um, stop, uh, hey, the newest bird, audio cue is buddy. exclamation point send it, and it is. I mean, there's always the the new one that I do is always my favorite. Hey, bird, As a PPL, October buddy. 2018. That's awesome. All right, so when, where was I at June? Destination A was is 135.9. Uh, where was I in June 2018? Um, all entries, okay. June 2018, let's see, where was I at? Oh, okay. So June 2018 was my very first lesson. Holy shit. What, what day was that? The first, so June first. So I took my first lesson two weeks after starting with Discord. That's crazy. Tomorrow is my one year anniversary of my CFI check. Right? Oh. Wow, man, that's insane. Oh. That flew by. I hate saying that sometimes. But, uh, Aviator Supreme. Supreme? Yeah, Aviator Supreme. Welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you for the follow. SoCal Approach, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. I'd like to cancel flight following. 204 Lima Echo, radar surface terminated, frequency change approved. Frequency changed approved, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo. We'll talk to you later. See ya. 2275. 72. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It is. It does feel like a first kiss in many ways. Although first lesson um, is not to me it was not as memorable as the discovery flight. But yeah, I mean it's it's the same. Pretty much the same deal. Yeah. All right. Let's get off of autopilot. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, 9,500, uh, 10 miles to the southwest. We'll be entering the Southwest Valley, Catalina. Uh, Big Bear. Whoops. That is awesome. Uh, fitness, I have the mini. I tried the regular iPad and it was freaking huge. Oh my god, it was freaking huge. And I just. No. The mini is perfect for me. Um, yeah. I make it the mini because I hear it's better for small J planes. Yeah, it's. Dude, it's way, way better. It's way better.
always fun to join fun to join and recognize the train. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so this is one of the um, one of the few kind of entrances into to Big Bear coming through this valley right here. Um, the other two ways that are kind of more popular um, are the Northwest Valley, um, and that's the, we took that route on the the first time I went to to Big Bear, and then the other one is around the other side on the northeast corner, um, and that's that's the long way around. Um, and also kind of the roughly the uh, the route that you take on the on the R nav. <clears throat> oh, that's so pretty looking. Uh, no, I got the the Wi-Fi mini, and it's great. I have. Um, I do have a Stratix, which I never use. Uh, the other, the, what I do use is the dual GPS. Um, what the hell is it? It's, I think it's just dual, dual GPS. There's some like alphanumeric model number for that, but it works great. The actual GPS signal is way better than the, than the Stratix. I mean, one of the planes that I have is um, ADS-B in and out on the uh, Garmin 375. So it's a like that's pretty. I mean, that's awesome just to have that. You know, all the ADS-B data right away. <clears throat> Big Bear traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, uh, eight miles to the west. Uh, west side of the lake, Big Bear. Oh, that's that's really nice. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Like the mindlessness of having ADSB. Hey, bird, whoa, buddy. Josh, Josh, thank you so much for the gifted sub to OBFG two. That is that is super nice, of you man. I appreciate that. Ob, enjoy, man. Uh, Century, great for AHARS and XM. Yeah, those those systems are really really nice. Um, yeah, if the if that 172 didn't have ADS-B in, um, you know, I might I might run the Stratix, but really, flight planning is enough. Honestly. Um, for me right now, with the with the trips that I've done, flight planning is has been enough for me. Uh, anything extra is a bonus, and um, yeah, I mean the traffic the traffic is good to have. Obviously, that's not nothing you can plan for. But um, Big Bear traffic, Bonanza two zero four Lima Echo, five miles to the west, entering left downwind for runway two six, full stop. Big Bear. All right, and there are some uh, noise abatement procedures here, and I can't remember what they are. It's like don't overfly the high school or some crap. I don't know. I think that's what it is. Or like, don't turn inside of it or something. Maybe that's what it is. I think it's don't turn inside of the high school. God, that looks so good. Did I get that right, Josh? It is, uh, like, don't turn within the... I knew it. Big Bear traffic, Bonanza, 204, Lima Echo, midfield, left downwind, 26, Big Bear.
There's the high school right there. Oh, that's that's awesome, Bundy. Yeah, this place is freaking beautiful, man. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza, 204 Lee Maco, left base, 26. Yeah, avoid overflying the high school. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Don't overfly it, okay. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza, 204 Lee Maco, final runway 26, Big Bear. Holy crap, undershot that one. Or overshot that one, I should say. Five hundred. Big Bear traffic, Bonanza, two zero four Lee Maco, short final two six, Big Bear. High isn't isn't terrible. I mean, the, those trees in the sim are are way more in the way than they than they really are. In real life, they're they're not like that much on uh, you know short final like that. Well, I'll salvage that, uh, that little overshoot there. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza 204, Lee Maco, clear 26. We're taxiing back, runway 26. Big Bear. Okay, strobes are coming off. Lean, we're going to keep that where it's at. Uh, when you tell pilots not to do something, they will do it. It's like the big red button. <laughs> uh, I've done a ton of motorcycle ride riding up Big Bear. There's some really nasty terrain. Yeah, but it's so pretty. <laughs> Don't overfly the high school, you say? Hmm. Okay. Any idea why Microsoft keeps giving me incorrect altimeter settings? Not sure what caused caused it but I get it every time I play now um not sure yo all traffic in the area please advise <laughs> not sure what you mean by incorrect altimeter setting um cause that is something that that you set so I'm not I'm not sure what um what you mean by incorrect uh altimeter setting Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. God, look at how pretty that looks. My God. Yeah, those trees, the mountains look awesome in this freaking sim. Holy crap, that's so great. This is a taxi man come on come on alright and we're gonna go to the little run up here because I want to test what this thing does with uh, altitudes and leaning. Um, oh, that's just the tips on in settings. So it's so bugged, don't use that. It's also incorrect heading indicator all the time, too, right? I don't what do you mean by that? Like the like what the what the tip readout is is saying? Dude, come on, turn.
there's a there's a value you can use to update the turning radius in plane in like the plane config file because it's like not close. <laughs> it, this thing can turn super tight in in real life, and they they have not done a great job at that. Um, all right, so let's do. Um, so we'll go f mixture full, and I'm gonna go and um, prop is full, full forward there, and let's see what the RPMs do. So I'll zoom in on the RPM. Oh, what's my binding for? Okay, so there's my binding for mixture. All right, so let's go full RPM. Full power. That's actually a lot higher than I would expect it to be. Let's back it off until it starts to RPM start to go up. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so that's about uh, 7, 27, 20. Am I, is that as, is that as, yep, okay, that's, now we're, we're coming back down, okay. Go back up, back up. Now it's going back down again. <laughs> what are you doing? It's going, going back down again. So 2720 was the highest. Let's do it by hand here. Now this is just because it's clunky in the sim. Yeah, it looks like it's not peaking anymore. Um, you know, you do this much quicker in the real plane. Uh, IRL, you taxi by. Oh crap! Was that leaned too much? Apparently. S explode the. Uh, um, avionics. Let's test that again. Twenty-seven. As long as it. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so twenty-seven is fine. Uh, an IRL, do you taxi by steering the nose wheel on all planes, some planes? Is it with rudder pedals or another control? Yeah, it's with the rudder pedals, generally speaking, but there are some planes that have a free castering nose wheel where you just, you're just you just using the brakes, the differential braking. Um, but the Bonanza um, just turns sharper than what it does, what it's um, set to do here. Uh, let's see your f okay so when you're too slow for rudder effectiveness differential braking is one way to turn or if you're too slow you can goose the throttle and get more airflow over the rudder <laughs> guys that own their own airplanes don't like hammering the brakes too much yeah great friggin question Okay, so now that we've got the mixture and everything all figured out somewhat, let's let, let her rip. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza 204 Lima Echo, departing runway 26, straight out, Big Bear. Okay, let's Approaching get runway 26. Lights coming on, camera, and we're going to leave the mixture where it's at. We're clear down. Entered runway 26, 5,800 feet runway. remaining. 5,800 feet and a density altitude of, was it 6,200 feet? So it's still pretty high. Still power, our speed is coming alive, engine instruments look good. About 70 knots, it's going to start to lift off the ground and want to fly. And then this plane goes from being 
super light, or super heavy to super light. have an in-flight cam cable. That's at least one way to do it. Um, the most reliable way, probably, I would say. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, uh, three mile upwind, departing to the west, Big Bear. Hmm. God, this plane is so great. The landing, just the feeling on landing is, is awesome. It really, really feels like the real plane so much. It's awesome. Big Bear Traffic, Bonanza 204 Lee Mako, five miles just departing uh, west shore of the lake. Last call, Big Bear. here. Um, yeah, Greg, it feels way better than X-Plane. Yeah, this this plane, the G36 Community Mod Bonanza, feels like more of the real plane than anything that I've flown in the sim. That doesn't mean that it is the best airplane in any of the sims because I have a very small sample size of planes that I've uh, flown in both the sim and in the real world. Um, I'm just blown away at how good this one is. I can't imagine. I can't imagine something much better or more accurate than this. And, you know, like, that's the, uh, you know, Performance, engine management, systems, uh, control inputs, all that stuff combined. Um, not necessarily the actual avionics. I think there's some clunkiness to this. And this does have the working title G1000 in it. But there still is some stuff that you know, is not, not awesome about it. But the actual flight characteristics and dynamics are pretty and this just looks exactly, exactly like it. Oh my god, that looks amazing. So freaking cool. say it looks freaking incredible in real life too.
All right, we're gonna head just right to um, Redlands. Hey, what's up, homie? Happy Tuesday, man. All right, homie, hit me with it, man. What do you got? Red Cam, thank you very much for following. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, Wally will definitely be real soon. SoCal Approach, good evening. Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, 5,000 5, descending, 4,500. Just over Redlands, like flight following to John Wayne at 4,500. 204, Lima Echo, SoCal Approach, Squawk 5701. Five seven zero one. We are the only, the only dude over Redlands. Doing a lot of IFR flights on Batson. Number one Mike Victor, kind of SoCal approach one three four point two. Correction one three four point nine. Thirty four point nine for one five Mike Victor song. Um, there are a little bit more. Uh, realistic, homie. I mean, it's close. Junior Four Lima Echo, better contact five miles northeast of San Bernardino Airport. You said you're inbound, John Wayne. Affirmative, affirmative inbound, John Wayne. Uh, Four thousand five hundred Four Lima Echo. Yeah, it's it's close, homie. It's just there. It's a little bit less forgiving. Um, uh, so screw it. Good night, man. Number one five, Mike Victor, level four thousand six. Yeah, it's. And I don't want to say less forgiving. It's just more of a. Number one five, Mike Victor, training SoCal network. Approach. So. The Los Angeles altimeter three zero two four. Yeah, that's in three zero two four. And one five, Mike Victor, uh, be looking for vectors for the uh, LDA uh, Charlie into Van Nuys. Uh, whenever you're ready. Number one five, Mike Victor, Roger. Clear to the Van Nuys Airport via December yeah. eighteen four thousand. Well, Right, heading three. That's a question. Of quality. Okay, descent maintain four thousand. Right, heading three four zero one five. Mike Victor. Yeah. Well, they're. Yeah. I mean, you. Vatsim controllers are very well trained, but they're also um, volunteers. So there's, you know, inherently just a. Um, lower sense of I, I don't want I, I always I have to be careful on what I say because I don't want to I don't want to say too many things about Vatsim that might come off as negative because a lot of people have great success and have a great time on Vatsim and it is great it's just different it's a different focus than what Pilot Edge has. Pilot Edge is a training network that is designed to realistically replicate the national air system, airspace system. VATSIM is a online ATC, like, it's more about, and this is, this is kind of opinion, VATSIM is more about accurate role playing than it is about true replication of the um, of the NAS. That's my opinion. That's that's how I've kind of looked at the two of them and compared them. Okay, three, zero, uh, six, it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just they're doing they're doing different things similarly. Um, so. Number one five, Mike Vader, got so cat approach one three four. Well, the, yeah, I mean, cultivated. They're not. I would say they're accurately five, trying to provide a realistic ATC experience to the to the highest level. Whether that is whether the purpose of that is to train you or to just provide, like that's what that's what they do. They are there to provide as realistic as possible one to one, um, you know, ATC coverage from. From the ground to the air and back. Um, so Cal approach to what kind of microphone Mike do you use? Is, uh, level four thousand. Um, I, I just have a blue snowball that I use. Turn left heading three zero zero. 
Left three zero zero one five Mike Victor. Yeah, PE and VATSIM are both great resources to be used for particular interests and goals. You meet similar expectations with both, um, but it depends on what extent you wish to immerse yourself and what objective you're willing to wanting to fulfill. So it's a tricky one, man. Kind of want to try Pilot Edge, but I think I like flying more regions since I'm a hobbyist, not a student. Which is fair. Which is definitely fair. Um, you know, the what what I have said for, for people like you, um, Snoover, is that it is hobbyist to another, to a different level that I think um, gains more appreciation for uh, for aviation in a realistic form. And that kind of comes in the form of smaller, slower, less ranged airplanes in a more detailed, focused Sakai environment. It's like, like I always, every time I see a new um, uh, like open world game, they always talk about how big their map is, and every, every game seems to get bigger and bigger. I always think, man, I would have as much fun, and sometimes more fun, with a smaller, more dense November map than like a big map with just a bunch of empty space. Um, the problem with Vatsim is that you have a lot of empty space in the form of uh, ATC not online. So where you have the ability to go to different regions, which is super awesome, it's not guaranteed and you might not get coverage when you want it, where you want it. Pilot Edge will give you guaranteed coverage in a smaller area and more thorough in that coverage. So it's a trade-off in my mind, but as a real-world pilot that gets real-world benefits from doing these flights and planning and practicing and doing the radio and all that stuff, um, it's a no-brainer for me. If you're a student learning how to fly, Pilot Edge is 100% no-brainer. If you're a hobbyist, then it becomes a little bit of a toss-up, depending on what kind of stuff you're into. So. Yeah. So that's that's my freaking spiel on that. The the never ending the never ending comparison and I mean it's just <clears throat> it's Xbox, PlayStation, Pepsi, Coke, you know, it's just uh, to a degree. I mean it's probably not they're not they're not as similar as those things are, but you know, there's there's people on both sides that are very passionate and uh, Squawk Info works both, so he he is um, he's a one five Mike Victor. He sees from both sides, and there are there are positives right and negatives. Right heading zero one zero. Right zero one zero one five Mike Victor, and down to three thousand four hundred. See if the Super Atus works. Number one five Mike Victor, three miles from side, like turn right at zero five zero, maintain three thousand four hundred. Old Spavis on Little Legend, clear out the ace, early approach. Expect circle for land, run at one six left. Okay, right zero five zero, three thousand four hundred. Till Spavis clear for the LDA, Charlie approach. Expect circle for land, one six left. One five Mike Victor, arriving and departing runway two zero left, two zero right. Visual approach is in use. EFR departures, contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested, read back all runway assignments and hold short instruction. Advise on initial contact you have information hotel. Hotel. John Wayne Airport, A to information. Turn left heading 120. Three on my turning left at 120. Hmm. Turn that off, please. Okay. 
Right on. SoCal Approach, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. I'd like to request the practice ILS 20 right approach at John Wayne. 204, Lima Echo, Roger, maintain VFR 4500. Turn left heading 220, vector practice approach. Left 220, vectors practice approach will maintain 4500, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo. 15 Mike, vector contact Van Nuys Tower on 119.3. 93 for 15 Mike, vector salon. All right, River, have a great one, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for uh, for joining. Hey, bird. Oh, buddy. Cultivator, thank you so much for the gifted sub to Crazy Humpty One. <laughs> uh, Cultivator, thank you, man. Cheers. It's just target water, but it is empty. Destination ATIS is 126.0. SoCal Approach, Bonanza 204, Lima Echo, 4500 220, heading. We information hotel at John Wayne. Marker 306, is center maintain final hold 240. 204 Lima Echo, SoCal approach the John Wayne altimeter 3024. Uh, 3024 for Lima Echo. Number 31 Mike, turn right heading 140. <clears throat> 31 Mike, right to 140. <laughs> Uh, well, thank, thank you. Okay, uh, Jeff, turn right, heading 280. All right, good night, Jerry. Hey, right, 280, oh, Bonanza, buddy. Foley, Maco. I heard that. I heard that right. Well, and thank you, Cultivator, for another gift that's up to Fast Fly. That is, that is super nice. Caution, TFR head. Street for Whiskey is about seven or eight miles north east from Paradise at 4,400. Looks like a practice localized low approach in Chino. Street for Whiskey, Squawk 7377 IDEM. 7377 IDEM, Street for Whiskey. All right, Brian. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. November six nine or three correction six nine or three one Mike. Yep. Clear to enter San Diego Bravo airspace. Maintain VFR at five thousand one five Bravo. Airspace. And nine or three one Mike. Clear to enter Bravo at or at five thousand feet. That was like a good evening arrival into John Wayne. One two three four whiskey radar contact three miles northeast of the Riverside Airport. You said localizer two six left in a Chino. It's because I made it up. <laughs> Head in the clouds. This is the name that I made up for. Turn right heading zero nine or zero vector localizer room two six right approach. Yeah, I know it's so gorgeous when the sun's going down. Number 204, Lee Manco, turn left, left turn, heading 170, intercept from 120, localizer. Left, 170, intercept the localizer, Bonanza 4, Lee Manco. November 4, Lee Manco, let's make it a heading of 180 to join for me. All right, 180, 4, Lee Manco. Four, Lima, three miles from Hookham. Center maintain 3,000 until Hookham clear. Let's turn to zero approach. All right, down to 3,000 until Hookham uh, cleared. ILS two zero right practice approach. Bonanza for Lima Echo. Right, 
Just want to make a five. If I left you a little too high there, just let me know. I can take you down real quick for another try. Yeah, we should be able to drop it in Bonanza for the Metco. That's right. November 1, 2, 3, 4, Whiskey, turn left direct to Casby, cross Casby, 4,300, cleared, localized, over 265, practice bridge. Turn left, left to Casby, cross Casby at 3,500, uh, cleared for the long approach. November 3, 4, Whiskey, Casby, 4,300. 4,300, Casby, 3, 4, Whiskey. 6931 Mike, turn left heading 120. A little tiny chop. 31 Mike, 120. Here. <laughs> yeah, somebody uh, somebody who's subscribed, type in exclamation point, send it. <laughs> oh, it's like really getting choppy right now. Turn left heading 120. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, come on. Why is it so bad right now? It's so high in the localizer. <laughs> there you go, fast play, it's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get there. This is this is the the Brad special approach into John Wayne where it's just full on balls to the wall. <laughs> Maintain best forward speed. You got it. Two two zero four Lima Echo, connect John Wayne Tower one two six point eight. Twenty six point eight Bonanza two zero four Lima Echo. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Two zero eight yeah, Alpha Lima Hold short. Two zero left marker one sixty nine. Walker three eighty five. Company traffic. Hold short. Two zero left Lima. Hold short. Two zero left Lima. Hold short. Two zero left Lima. Hold short. Coming traffic. Walker three eighty. John Wayne Tower Bonanza two zero four Lima Echo uh, ILS two zero right practice approach. Bonanza 204, Liam Echo, John Wayne Town, Road 20 right, clear to land. Clear to land 20 right, Bonanza 204, Liam Echo. Lights no one five, Mike, take the next right turn off the runway, taxi to park, or left or right, your choice, you can taxi to park and monitor ground, have a nice day. Two mile two. final runway okay, two we'll, zero. Uh, two mile parking. final, we're doing 160. One five, Mike Victor, have a great day. And then, do you need to do something for the rating for the Sky High One? And Ariel? there uh, we go. And I did. You are passed for the Sky One. Roger that. Thank you. One five, Mike Victor. Take care. There you go. The speed brakes. Still never made the glide slow. Excuse me. Both on localizer low approach. Oh man, this is how we do it at John Wayne. Like we, we were 160 over this parking lot in real life before. It's bonanzas are freaking amazing. Tower. Uh, <laughs> you're looking to go miss, is that correct? Yeah, one 160 right That's here. Correct. We were right here. Number three, four whiskey runway two six left, clear for the option. Two six uh, left, cleared for the option, or two six right. Yeah, they, they find it amusing. I'm sorry, number 26 right clear for the option. 26 right clear for the option, check out whiskey. Oh, I just feel so good to be back home. Walker 169 cross, runway 20 left at Lima, runway 20 right, line up and wait. Cross 20 left at Lima, runway 20 right, line up and wait, Walker 169. Oh shit. Rick, that still ended up being okay, but I, I freaking knocked the throttle. <laughs> so I went momentarily, momentarily full power there for a second. Holy crap! Oh, that scared the crap out of me. 
That was going to be nice, too. Right line X-ray, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha, Juliet, ready to taxi, I have Sulu. Evidence of fully medical taxi to parking via left on Bravo, monitor the ground, evidence today. All right, parking uh, via Bravo, we'll monitor ground, Bonanza 204 Lameca. We'll see you up. Thanks. Take care, man. Walker 169, runway 20 right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff to your right, Walker 169. Have a good flight, Walker. John Wayne Town, hold short, runway 20 left at Lima. There he goes. It'll be uh, about three minutes just for the same direction of flight. Okay, hold short, 20 left at Lima, Walker 3. This, this could be cool. Burbank Tower, Moonry 911. 9135 Kilo. Uh, holding short runway. This is, eight, this is how John Wayne looks usually. 9135 Kilo, Burbank Tower, runway 8, clear for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, runway 8. Just have to get my tongue out of the way now. <laughs> That's so um, cool. <laughs> oh, he's heavy. Wow. He's really heavy. 28 right, Hotel Alpha, Bravo for Julian. He Local used, like, at culture. least uh, an extra thousand feet of runway. Take you now. That is, that's hilarious. Yeah, a little bit generic on the livery, but that was pretty good. Yeah, so Brad likes to go fast for as long as possible in, in the Bonanza. I mean, it's a, his... His rationale is it's a high-performance plane. It likes to go fast. Why not let it go fast? So part of it is that, yes, sometimes if you're coming in on the right side, there will be jet traffic that they'll want you to... Um, yeah, no, yeah, I knew, I knew Snoober. Um, there, there will be jet traffic that they're going to want to keep you spaced with. The Bonanza will do, like I said, 160 to the parking lot. Um, so way faster than the jet guys are going to be going. Um, you know, we've we've had some, some pinch plays, squeeze plays uh, before that are crazy. You know, we've got a Southwest breathing down our neck um, as we're doing a, a, a formation break. <laughs> to John Wayne before, um, but yeah, so they 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 like you to go fast when they need you to. It's it hasn't been with the with the traffic levels that we're at right now. It honestly has not been. Um, there haven't been that many instances where they need you to go fast um, on the right side, but it's really more of a party piece to be able to do 160 uh, until the parking lot you know and you pitch up prop full forward gear down the gear goes down at 155 knots so you can you're going pretty fast and then you just trim it and you know it will do it it will do it and i would even say a little bit on the comfortable side which is which is pretty cool um it's not like a weird feeling approach you know it's it's more of a uh, tactical option, maybe, um, if that's even fair to say. Uh, you know, tactically, I don't know if you would really need to do that, but like I said, with, with jet traffic on the right side, you might be asked to maintain best forward speed. Do you need to do 160 to the parking lot? No. Um, that is more of a, you know, <laughs> personal preference, I guess. Um, I mean, even coming in on the left side, doing 170 plus coming in from uh, Signal Peak, just friggin' hauling ass um, downhill off Signal Peak into the pattern. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Well, thanks guys for for joining tonight. This was a lot of fun. I I really enjoy keeping keeping it local. Um, <laughs> Whoop. frame rate on that thing is a little bit sketch but that's cool um, I do like these um, these local flights you know that I'm you know can do in my sleep it's kind of fun um, to be able to, to share some of those experiences with you guys and also it just makes it easier to stream when it's a flight that I know and I don't have to actually think about it too much uh, I don't 
one I have to think if I don't have to. Um, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm sure you have no problem believing that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, thank you guys for for joining. Um, okay, so thank you guys for joining. Here's the Discord. If you are, uh, if you're new, if you haven't joined the Discord, you got to. You almost have to. Um, it's super fun. So there's there's that link. Um, I will be back here on um, Thursday. Will we be seeing you? bring the Aerosoft CRJ into John Wayne when it comes out. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Snoober, well, I appreciate that. I think we'll probably do... Well, I there's a potential for a um, uh, special event, I guess, f for Thursday. So look out for that. I, I don't... It hasn't been confirmed yet, so I don't want to say anything, but there... Um, there's a potential for um, a pretty a pretty decent uh, giveaway, so just like um, keep that in mind because it it could be could be worth your while. Um, okay, this guy looks this guy looks good. We got a we got a um, webcam. He's in a GA plane with uh with the new bravo so we'll we'll say hi to him uh geek nation so tell him that i said hello um and then yeah like try to uh try to make it for thursday and we might might be able to make it worth your while um oh, more wow. than just the the oh, um, wow. entertainment in general uh pops mcdaddio welcome aboard thank you for the follow um have to have to join us on thursday so be there Thursday, join the Discord, and we'll see you guys soon. So say hi to Geek Nation and give them some support from the aviation community. All right.